Hey guys, so I'm going to give you a second. When I say Doctor Who, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when I say Doctor Who? I'll give you a second to um, say things at your computer screen or phone screen like I'm able to hear them. All right. So Doctor Who, TARDIS, the Doctor, uh, Daleks, Cybermen, the Master, time, space, um, really just like sci-fi stuff, um, you know, stuff like that, regeneration, uh, maybe a specific doctor or uh, actor comes to mind, you know, so if I say Doctor Who, people will think, oh, you know, Matt Smith or William Hartnell or Tom Baker, or, you know, just something like that. Now, that is usually what people think about when people think of Doctor Who. It's a, it's a show that's going to be 60 years old. I mean, like, they're filming the 60-year 60, uh, 60 anniversary. Um, it's been around a while. It's got quite a legacy. You know, you have quite a history with, with Doctor Who, so much so that they brought it back, what, 2004, 2005, with New Who, with Christopher Eccleston. And uh, we've been going through then, and we're getting a new Doctor. And... Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, because Jodie Whittaker as the first strong female doctor uh, wasn't enough. Uh, viewership is at an all-time low. When she, she started as the, uh, as the doctor, the show had maybe, what, 10 million viewers? Now it's down to about 2 to 3 million. Because everyone is tired of the pandering bullshit. Now we've got... Oh, we've got our first... Um, this is the next Doctor. And according to Neil Patrick Harris, who is only going to be like a, show, a short stay on the series. I think he's playing like a villain that might be in for like one episode. Doctor Who's new Time Lord will be gay. And sexier than ever. Two things that don't even fucking come to your mind when you think of Doctor Who. Now, I love Neil Patrick Harris. I think as an actor, he is completely brilliant. I love him as an actor. But when you're, you're trying to promote the Doctor, and these are the things you choose as uh, the things to promote as gay and sexier... When people watch Doctor Who, I seriously doubt they're sitting there like, huh, I wonder who the Doctor has sex with. What are his preferences? What, what are their pronouns? Are they going to be sexy? Uh, that, that's not something you think about. Doctor Who's a sci-fi show about a dude who flies through time and space in a fucking phone box. Also, the new companion, oh, oh, as, as if it couldn't get any more pandering. So not only do we have a gay black doctor, Yasmin Finney, the new companion, who is transgender. So don't sit here and say they're not trying to fucking pander. Yasmin Finney is a biological male. And they identify as female. And this is going to be the next companion. But they totally don't have an agenda. They totally care about Doctor Who. So, black doctor, gay black doctor, transgender companion. Gay and sexier than ever. Now, don't get me wrong. David Tennant, when he was the doctor, he was sexy. But did they come out and like, like try to like advertise and promote that doctor that way? No. Um, because that's not what it's about. No one gives a flying fuck about the doctor's sexual preference. No one gives a flying fuck. And that they, they, they keep promoting this bullshit in everything. Children's cartoons. 
video games, comic books. Like, look at comic books. They wonder why more people are reading mangas. It's because they come out with these new fucking stupid ass superheroes who are generic. But it's oh my god, look at them! They're like, uh, uh it's 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 a strong black non-binary superheroes, supers. Read our comic, and then you read the comic, and the character is written like shit. You have TV shows or movies like, oh my god, guys, they're it's they're the first female black, this or that. And they're super gazies, or like a cat, a uh, Batwoman. Super gazies, and she's blacks, and and then fucking views tank, and they wonder why. It's because no one cares, especially when you start putting messages like they did in Jodie Whittaker's. White men are bad. Men are bad. Guns are bad. Black people are oppressed. They had an entire episode with a space racist trying to kill Rosa Parks. So you have all those factors fact, uh, put together with them pandering to a very small community. Because who are the only people who are going to care about this? The fucking weirdos on Twitter. The ones who think that sex, like the sexuality, is the most important thing. The ones who are like, yeah, uh, if you don't get my pronouns right, those people. They were pandering to those people. So when this series tanks, like I said, we're already down to, what, two, three million viewers. It's going to go up the first episode because everyone's going to be tuning in to see how it is. It's not going to stay like that for long. It's going to be just like Jodie Whittaker's. It's going to be really high on that first episode and then suddenly, because people are going to see that it's more preaching, and Russell T. Davies, I mean, if this is what we're expecting, a super gay, uh, sexy doctor with a transgender uh, uh, companion, I, I, I don't think we will be getting the same kind of quality from him that we, we expect and it's a shame. Hopefully, it's not the case. But it, it kind of looks like it's just going to be more preaching. And that's all it was with Jody Whitaker. You know, that's why by the end, it only had two, point, you know, two to three million viewers. Because people just stopped watching. Because people got tired of being preached to. People got tired of being, oh... Yeah, white people are bad, black people are oppressed, and this and that. You know, we, we don't watch Doctor Who to be preached to. Now, you can say Doctor Who's always been political. Yeah, in certain ways. For the most part, it was always usually balanced. You know? They, they saw, they you know, used to see, see things on both sides. You know, it, it's kind of like South Park, where they bash everyone. Where you don't know who they, you know, the Matt and Trey, you don't know who they support. Because they bash everyone. One of them is Jewish, and they are constantly bashing Jews. That's the way it should be, where it's fair and imbalanced. But when they come out and, like, white men are bad, black people are oppressed, uh, racism, this and that, you know what side they're on. You know what they're trying to promote. You know, <sighs> I don't have a problem with these types of characters, but they're never, ever written well. Like I said, comic books do this all the time now. They'll come out with a gay character or a non-binary character or a trans character, slap some stupid fucking superhero power on them and expect people to love it. You can't love a character if they're not well-written. If you're just saying, oh, the Doctor's gay because we're just going to make him gay. I mean, is it going to be pertinent to the plot? Is his, his gayness going to come into the, the play? If it's not, then who fucking cares? It's the doctor. It's Doctor Who. We're not watching to see him fucking try to get it on with, with other people. Time, space, aliens, history. That's what we watch it for. The sci-fi aspect. Not, oh gee, I wonder who he's going to have a heart on for today. Gee, I wonder what the doctor's pronouns are going to be. 
again, they're they're pandering to that very small community of weirdos on fucking Twitter who make sexuality about everything. The people who go throughout their day and you know wonder, oh, what's the sexuality of this person? What's it? What's their pronouns? People who get upset when they don't use, you know, people you don't, you don't use their pronouns. Those are the people that this is pandering to. Oh my God! Yes, Queen. Yes, representation. They're pandering to those fucking weirdos. Again, there's nothing wrong with these types of characters, but they are never, ever, ever written correctly. They're used as a marketing ploy for those fucking idiots who only care about that shit. And it works every fucking time. And that's the genius of it. Because these people's IQs are so fucking low. They don't know that they're being pandered to. They don't know that they're being used. Like, every June, Pride Month comes around and all these fucking corporations slap a fucking rainbow flag on their, their profile pictures. You know, suddenly all these characters come out and they're gay. All these products come out and they're advertised towards uh, the LGBTQ plus community. Do you really think they care? No. But they know you're stupid enough to buy anything as long as they promote it as a uh, representative of the LGBTQ plus community. They know you'll throw money at them. They know you'll view and, 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 and tune in to these shows or buy their video games or buy their comic books as long as you have that fucking representation. It doesn't matter if the story is good. It doesn't matter if the character is well written. It doesn't matter if any of it even makes sense. You're going to be stupid enough to buy it because like, oh my God, they're super gay. These I need to buy it. Yes, queen representation. And it works every fucking time. That group is being used as a fucking marketing tool. And you idiots are too stupid to realize that. So now we have a gay, sexy doctor. Not a uh, charming witty that they would normally be uh, uh, described as or, you know, fun and energetic. No, gay and sexier than ever. Two things I totally think about when I think of Doctor Who. Again, I love Neil Patrick Harris, but Neil, considering you said yourself you, you really didn't know about much about Doctor Who, eh, you might want to just shut up. You might just want to shut up. I love you as an actor. But when promoting Doctor Who and the new Doctor, it, it, it's best not to describe them as gay and sexier than ever. But anyways, that's it for me. You guys know the drill. I'll see you guys later. Yes.